Now bringing you this tragic story that has gripped not only Australia, but now the rest of the world. Almost two weeks ago, a family gathered for lunch in a small town in rural Australia. A day later, four people fell ill and within a week, three were dead. It is suspected that a deadly mushroom might have been served at the meal and that might have played a part. Here's what we know so far. 48-year-old Erin Patterson, here she is. She invited her former in-laws, Gail and Don Patterson, plus Gail's sister and husband, Heather and Ian Wilkinson, over for lunch. During the lunch, she served a dish with mushrooms that Erin claims she bought from a local store. It turns out that those mushrooms were not edible and likely were death cap mushrooms, which are the most poisonous mushrooms in the world. Now, three of her four guests are dead from suspected mushroom poisoning, with Mr Wilkinson fighting for his life still in hospital. Now, Erin Patterson has vehemently denied any wrongdoing. Joined now by Australian foraging expert Ingrid Button, also forensic pathologist Dr Michael Barden, who has worked on a mushroom poisoning case himself, and Sky News Australia host Jenna Clark joins us. First of all, Jenna, if we could go to you, please. We want to talk to you a little bit about the details on this story. Uh, I know you've been tracking it closely. Just, just fill in an international audience and what they need to know. Yeah, absolutely horrifying scenes in a small town in rural Victoria, Rosanna. It's about 150 kilometres southeast of Melbourne. So it's a very tight knit community. Uh, they all, uh, about four of them went to lunch, uh, as you said, uh, a couple of Sundays ago, and three of them are now dead. I have an update uh, this morning. Uh, Ian Wilkinson, who is one of the gentlemen who is in a critical condition, he now requires a liver transplant. And there's news just breaking that Erin Patterson's estranged husband, Simon, his two parents, Don and Gail uh, passed away after that meal. He was actually in an induced coma about this time last year after a suspected poisoning with an issue with his small intestine. The Herald Sun, which is a local newspaper here in Australia, is reporting that they've seen social media posts which pertain to that. So this story has got a lot of legs left to go. It does. And just one more thing, Jenna. Um, in terms of Erin's uh, husband or estranged husband partner, um, he also got sick last year. What, what, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we have um, apparently twice last year he, he was quite ill. He fell quite ill and was in an induced coma for 16 days and required uh, acute surgery on his small intestine. But in a social media post that a number of uh, outlets have seen here in Australia, he did thank his now estranged wife Erin for her support during that time. But then we have a, a headline on the front of the Herald Sun today saying something like, she tried to poison me, but it's important to note that the uh, Victorian forensic detectives are saying that uh, Ms Patterson has been questioned. She hasn't been ruled out yet as a suspect. And uh, they've also been to a local tip and they've retrieved a dehydrator, a food dehydrator, which they're now uh, testing for death cap, death cap mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, because it must be restated here that obviously investigations are still very much ongoing and it's actually almost like a lack of information that is causing a lot of speculation to fill the void, as you, as you said there. We did mention that Erin, um, the lady at the centre, she's denied this strenuously, all wrongdoing. She was uh, report, spoke to reports outside her house that she was absolutely distraught that these uh, family-in-law members had died. She didn't mean to do it. It's nothing to do with her, she said. Let's take a listen to that. Oh, just that little clip there, you can see, though, that terribly stressed, obviously, but tons of speculation here. But we'll have to wait and see the outcome of the investigation. Let's speak to some experts then on this. Uh, coming first to you, Ingrid, you're in there in Australia. I gather you got up very early to speak to us, so we do appreciate that. Uh, you are a foraging expert. You specialise in mushrooms. You're based in Australia. In fact, I believe in the state where this is all taking place. So how did you feel when you heard this story? Because you're aware of the dangers of mushrooms, aren't you? Absolutely devastated, to be honest. And us in the foraging community have been waiting for something like this for quite some time. It's really a atmosphere of uh, sort of bragging around a lot of mushrooms and a lot of online identification of incorrect mushrooms. Uh, so we're not obviously casting any blame there, but it is a really dangerous activity to go foraging, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And death cap mushrooms are really easily misidentified as three other mushrooms. So they are also responsible for nine out of 10 global mushroom deaths. So this is not the first time this has happened and let's hope it's the last. Uh, how easy is it 
to make a mistake when it when foraging you know you educate people on this um is it possible to make an honest mistake it is uh if you don't know what you're doing as i said it can be a really dangerous thing if you had have attended one of my educational workshops you wouldn't have done so uh, purely because we have three simple rules regarding foraging number one if in doubt live it out number two white gills probably kills and number three, if it stains yellow or green, you should not be keen. And death cat mushrooms are those specific mushrooms mentioned. So if it's yellow or green and has a tinge on the mushroom, that is a clear sign that it is not an edible mushroom. Crikey. I mean, I don't like mushrooms anyway, so not at risk of this, but the thought of picking the wrong one is terrifying. Let's cross to Dr. Michael uh, now. To my understanding, you have worked on a mushroom toxicology case before. I just want to tell the viewers as well some of the work you've been involved in. You chaired the panel on reinvestigating the deaths of President John F. Kennedy, Dr. Martin Luther King. You've also been an expert in investigations on George Floyd, Jeffrey Epstein, O.J. Simpson, among others, and the host of your own HBO autopsy, just to give our viewers a little sense of who we're speaking to here. Tell us a little bit about that mushroom case if you wouldn't mind and how how you go about investigating something like this yeah when i was a uh, chief medical examiner in new york city we had a couple uh, a middle-aged couple who had gone foraging uh in the woods for uh, mushrooms as they did a number of times earlier and they picked up this uh, in in this case it was a white mushroom but it can be green or yellow or even brown uh which turned out to be the Amanita phylloides uh, mushroom, uh, also called the destroying angel. Um, and um, uh, the difficult part of it is the toxicology doesn't usually help. The, it's a history, it's a delayed action um, uh, uh, mushroom. That is, a person doesn't feel the symptoms, uh, liver damage, kidney damage, uh, for maybe 12 hours, 24, 36 hours, when they become sick. They become sick with violent vomiting, with uh, bloody diarrhea, and uh, whatever the toxins are in the body get metabolized. So when they die, uh, there isn't much uh, chemicals to work with, and it's the history of eating the mushrooms, how they obtain the mushrooms, uh, and uh, that helps in determining whether it's an accident or homicide or suicide. Any of them could happen with a deadly mushrooms, with this mushroom. But what's interesting is, is how uh, the, the uh, preparer of the mushrooms uh, 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 obtain the mushrooms and uh, mm. the symptoms, the, the uh, chemicals, the uh, poisons start damaging the liver and the kidneys right away, mm -hmm. but it isn't symptomatic for a day or so. And that's why it's so difficult to uh, uh, find it from a chemical point of view. Uh, and as Jenna laid out to us the details on this story at the start, you know, investigators still piecing together all they, they know, but they're not telling us yet with regard to uh, how the mushrooms were obtained, if they were directly uh, a cause of the deaths of these people, who ate them and at what times. I mean, how likely is it that they can get a clear answer given the information that has been made available that we know they've got so far? Well, it would depend on uh, where she obtained the mushrooms. It's unlikely that she got it for the local store and the only people who were uh, injured were the uh, people, the four people involved. And uh, a part of it has already been mentioned the treatment for the, the severe poisoning is a liver or kidney transplants. You know, there's no uh, antidote for the, uh, for the toxins, but uh, it, it depends on the t detectives finding where the mushrooms came from, whether it could have been foraging, accidental, because these are beautiful looking mushrooms for people who are uh, unfamiliar with what they look like. They look like uh, prized mushrooms uh, to us uh, non-foragers uh, uh, like myself. And uh, mm. they can cause severe uh, uh, life-threatening deaths. And it's the most common mushroom, I mean, Amanita phylloides, uh, in the United States, in India, in, mm. in, in England, in Australia, uh, that causes death. 
I actually want to come back to Ingrid quickly and ask then um, the likelihood you think of whether it was possible this did get into a store in the town uh, where she lived. You, you took the words out of my mouth. The likelihood of that occurring is pretty much impossible. So first of all, all mushrooms supplied to shops will be from the mushroom farm. They are grown in a different medium. These particular mushrooms, death cap mushrooms, Amanita phylloides, require a host tree, particularly oak. So the likelihood of them winding up for sale would have either needed to be through a uh, third party, through some sort of suspicious uh, purchase or sale there. We have seen a lot of uh, Facebook posts and sales with people using other people's photos and selling mushrooms that way. So it could have been from a disreputable source, mm. but the likelihood of you buying the incorrect mushroom from the supermarket is nigh on impossible. I, I really strongly would be ab absolutely shocked if that was the case, to be honest. Thank you both for showing your expertise us this evening. Jenna, thank you for reporting just quickly. Uh, when can we expect further updates? Do you know? Uh, probably within the next couple of hours, Rosanna, we're expecting Victoria Police to hold another press conference. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm sure we will be back to you when this story develops. All three of you, thank you for joining us.